Is it, you see it quivering? It's the like temptation. a lie. It's, it's, there's some energy in it. Yeah. You see that? That's They're beautiful. Dooku energy. Dooku energy. If we could only harness that, monetize that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's monetize it, Adam. Let's monetize. We're all about monetizing Dooku's, the Dukes of Dooku's. Can we swear? Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Fucking good, good Dooku, man. Mmm. <laughs> Is it strange that when I look at certain fruit, I find myself a bit aroused? Almost like it's trying to seduce me. By overwhelming my senses. Like it wants to be devoured. Like we're meant to be together. Fruit tempts us with enlightenment. We've struggled to portray their beauty. Crossed lands to find them. Fought wars over them. But somewhere along the way, we stripped them of their power. Reduced to a still life, fruit has become predictable. Or has it? My name is Young Chang. My name is Adam Golner. And we are the fruit hunters. We are the we are the we are the we are the hunters of the fruit hunters. We're the people <laughs> who we're the people who, who write and uh, make movies about the fruit hunters. The thing about um, fruit collecting is that. There's no end. And if you have friends overseas and they give me a call tomorrow, I'm on the plane to find <laughs> Before long, it became an obsession and uh, I was no longer a normal person. It blossomed into a full-time case of insanity. Oh man, you know, when I started out in this whole thing, I was just like, I'm a filmmaker. I love to eat, I like food. I'm gonna, you know, I've just come off this movie called China Heavyweight, which was a film that actually came out at the same time as Fruit Hunters, but China Heavyweight was, you know, human drama, boxing, blood, sweat, and tear kind of movie. And I didn't want to deal with that. I wanted something happy and inspiring. And Adam and I both discovered, I think, that fruit is inspiring. It's like, they're full, they're sculptural and they're beautiful. And it was like, uh, like this, this sort of idea that using fruit as a source of imagination, where could we take it? Where could I take it as a filmmaker? Do you remember the first time you had one of these? I remember the first time I had one, it's, it's when I had a, a house party and I asked people to bring a special rare fruit. A guy I went to high school with brought one of these and I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that he'd found something like this. And I, I asked him where he found it and he said Chinatown. I remember bringing it to an editor at this magazine and saying, I want to write about this and where it came from, and I want to go find more of these. It's an excellent pitch. They did end up sending me to Hawaii, mm. where I met Ken Love, who became one of the stars of the film. Exactly. And it's all and because of this in Montreal's Chinatown. The key thing about when you're approaching a documentary film is to find, you need to find the right subjects. You need to find characters. And in documentary, I think a lot of the terminology we use uh, is similar to feature filmmaking. Uh, we're casting, you know, we're looking for characters, we're looking for storylines and narrative arcs. The fruit world is a world of, it's the marketplace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before the stock market, <laughs> it was the fruit market. It was the fruit market. Yeah. It's where people were executed publicly. It was where justice was, there, was wow. dealt out. Exactly. Um, Shall we go to this one here? Yeah, let's do it. One of the, the biggest challenges that I had, and one of the biggest questions question marks that I had was, you know, do these fruit hunters actually exist? This is perfect. There's like, a, it, right in front of us, there's like five is, things that we gotta pick up. This is so much better. The best thing is that they have durian. Durian is considered the stinkiest fruit in the world. Yeah. Adam, you described it uh, in your book as uh, 
Like eating your favorite ice cream while sitting on the toilet. Yeah. So I hit the road on a research trip and I went to Hawaii and I met with Ken Love, the fruit guru of Hawaii, and he knows anything about fruit. These are picked, these are cut off the tree. You see the stems? In, in Borneo, that would be a no-no. You would never eat that. That's like, that's, that's Thai style. In Borneo, it has to fall and crack open on the floor and then you eat it. You hear the thud through the forest and you go. Best fruit I ever ate. You know, people ask that question, like, what's yeah. your favorite fruit? The favorite fruit is the one you eat that you were invited to eat in someone's backyard, yeah. like a freshly fallen durian, oh, which yeah. I'll never forget in, uh, in the backyard of a Balinese woman's house. It was delicious. I then went to Miami and I met with the Rare Fruit Council International and a collection of members who ranged from, you know, backyard hobbyists to amateur fruit gardeners to adventurers, fruit hunters who like to travel the world. It's such a rookie question, what's your favorite yeah, fruit? Yeah, it is a rookie question. It's not about the favorite fruit, it's no. about that moment, right? You're searching for that eternal unknown moment, as you describe in your book. It's about entering the eternal now. The eternal now. And then I found Richard Campbell and Nerissa Ledesma. To me, they're like the Indiana Joneses of fruit hunting. Their life's mission is to collect and cultivate and conserve rare varieties of fruit. There's a statistic that every day, you know, a variety is lost, you know, it's, and, and you'll never ever get to find that or taste that again. So that really kick-started the journey. Like, you know, there's a story there. I can use these fruit hunters like Nerissa and Richard and follow a mission, you know, and follow them as they search for something. Now this is a fantastic fruit called the mangosteen. The queen, the queen of fruits. The queen of fruits, and that's the king of fruits. Yeah, the the durian is considered the king. This is the queen. I could eat all of this in one sitting. I'm sure that's <laughs> what we need to do today. A sitting. <laughs> that's what happens with fruit hunters, they have sitting. <laughs> uh, that's what happens when we get together. I think we, uh, uh, fruit and, Fruit and Adam, uh, we, we, you know, it becomes a bit of a uh, uh, orgiastic experience. Something you need when you're on the hunt yeah, is a, a good dagger or blade to yeah. cut through the depths of a jungle. Yeah, you get fruit and, you know, people that love fruit together and it's going to be wild. It's going to be unforgettable. Shall we? Yeah. One of the challenges with Adam's, trying to adapt Adam's book, was that he did so vividly and, and, and eloquently describe the taste and flavor of fruit. And you know, because cinema is such a visual landscape, I was, I think many people were concerned, would it be, would it translate? You know, when people are eating fruit, would we be able to get what it, what it means to, to the intricacies of, of the flavor of something. What Patrick is about to do is what happened to me while I was making the film, oh, man. which is the fruit hunter cannot help but to pass you the fruit. And while you're shooting, you can't help but want to just take it, even though you're in the middle of a per potentially perfect shot. Look at that, hand in front of camera, shaking a little bit. Yeah, quivering from the anticipation. That is the Duke How moment. How fucking good is that? Oh my God, it's so good. The Dukes of Dukus. Holy shit. A third way through making the movie, I started noticing that I didn't always want to have the cameras around me. That oftentimes I wanted to be alone with the fruit and the people that had the fruit, and I wanted to just eat the fruit. Uh, and that's when I started realizing that that innate connection, that fruit hunter connection, was coming out of me. You ready for another moment of civility mm. Mm. in the mix, in the midst of mm. barbarism on all sides? Oh my God! Mm. Oh my mm. God! Fuck, mm. fuck. <laughs> There's something about that sight that's definitely a bit boner inducing. When you have a really good fruit, it almost makes you feel like yeah. you're lying down for a second. You feel reverential. Mm -hmm. You know, like a better have some respect mm -hmm. for the fact that nature produced this. Because mm. what mm. is that? I, it, the beautiful sculpture. Fruit hunters have arrived. Oh, my dad's here. <laughs> oh, yes, perfect. <laughs> Let's get him in on this. Here. How are you doing? How are you? Very well. Pretty good. I think half the battle is getting people to see these things. Because mm -hmm. they can't mm -hmm. imagine them. That's the first thing. You can't imagine mm -hmm. them. Look at that. Come Jesus. on. Magical. Come on. Wow. Have you had a durian before? No. All right, well, <laughs> perfect timing. That's opening up. It's opening right up. Oh my god. Straight it's right. It, it is really ripe. Oh, it's ripe. Oh my god. You 
smell that funk? That ju- smell that jungle funk? Split in the dirt. It's, it's got jungle funk in it. I'm gonna split her open here. Split oh, that open. God. <laughs> the second thing is to get them to taste it. Because if you taste these things, you're sold. Mm-hmm. You get it. You're like, oh my god. Mm. Wow. Mm. <laughs> it's like think? fried ice cream or something. You there know? you go. Yeah. yeah, like yeah. It's got a fried taste. Isn't it funky? Yeah. It is amazing. It's amazing. It's genius. And it's so soft. It's so. Uh, it's custardy. Wow. It's like custard. And it's one of the old oh, philosophical that. problems of how do you describe a mm. sense to somebody who hasn't mm-hmm. experienced it empirically for themselves. Like you really can't describe the taste of a pineapple to somebody. You have to eat the pineapple. The, the tragedy of fruit consumption in North America is often that you go to the supermarket, for example, and all you find are the common varieties of the five things, you know, the apple, the pear, the banana. If you really want to blow up the, uh, the issue, it's sort of like, Humans have gotten so good at making fruit so perfect, right? Because it is this collaboration, this cooperation between fruit and human where we created and crafted fruit and, you know, made it taste better, look better, brighter, more colorful. But as a result, we've sort of created this, um, this saturated this, uh, this world of fruit so that all you have are just five varieties of the perfect fruit that doesn't taste right. But fruit, is, it really isn't about that. Fruit is all about, you know, this kind of thing, this platter of unusual uh, tastiness uh, that you can't find anywhere else. Like there, There's a problem where uh, I think at the source of it all, we've forgotten what it means to be fruit hunters because we all have it. In our in our hearts, uh, you know, we, it's sort of we're, we're wired to be fruit hunters, and uh, and I think maybe something we do in the movie and in, in your book is try to find that reconnection, to to like to to be able to uh, open up that locked away uh, innate you know uh, connection that we have with appreciating fruit.